Welcome back. This is activity two for the authorizer self-assessment. So now that you've rated your office, office's practices against the 21 standards, it'll be useful to get focused on which standards you want to prioritize to improve your authorizing office's practices. So we want you to be able to take a moment to consider your ratings within each category. So there's 21 that's a lot of standards, so let's just focus down into these five categories and what's the number one standard within each one. So remember you have the five categories, you have the numbered standards within each. You may want to pause right now, pause this video, and write down on a piece of paper which standard is it that you find is of highest importance. Now that you're back, it's important to think about which of these five categorical priorities is number one. Now that is not always an easy process because basically you'll probably think everything's important. One of the things that we use to help uh, with prioritization, uh, and this is one of two tools I'll share with you. One is just effort and impact. So simply effort is on the vertical axis here, like which takes the heaviest lift, right? High effort versus low effort. On the right, uh, so the left to right axis is impact. So which one will give you the best and most impact over time? So ultimately what you want to go to and what is most ideal is the lowest effort for the highest impact. Now, it, everything doesn't have to be super tough and high effort in order to have, have high impact. Some things take that. Other times, the best is low effort, high impact. So as you think about each of these priorities that you're putting forth, which is the one that will probably help give you uh, the highest impact for the lowest effort? Another way to think about this is short-term and long-term. So with this Venn diagram, we tend to think of short-term wins versus long-term benefits. So what you want to do is hit that spot between the two. Now there are plenty of processes that you can knock out in an afternoon, and then you have that there. Now that's a short-term win, but it may not bring you a long-term benefit. So you may want to prioritize something that will take a little bit more time and have a longer lasting effect. So you might want to organize your priorities into short and long term and figure out what kind of hits right in the middle. Ultimately, you're going to create an action plan once you identify that one priority. So once you choose the one standard that is your priority, what you want to do is think about these four things. Number one is your preferred state. So what do you want your office to look like relative to that particular standard. Now it may just be that you want to achieve the standard verbatim. So you just rewrite that standard as it's written. Otherwise, it may be helpful for you to rewrite it uh, reflective of the context that your office is in. And so that's what you're really moving toward. That is your preferred state within that standard. Second is the measure when and what so by when we will achieve x okay so you need to be able to define your measure as something that is concrete time sensitive and you will know it when there's an outcome associated with it so when will it happen and what is it that you are working to achieve now third you need to consider who is responsible. So it might be one person, it might be multiple people with different aspects of the action plan, but ultimately who has responsibility uh, to see this through. And the fourth part is what resources are needed to achieve this. So things don't happen for free and not everything costs money. It might just be time or it might be connecting people with other people, but you really have to consider what will this take and you may have to make requests from your leadership uh, for resources, whether it be time or money in order to fulfill these things. But having gone through this process, you'll be able to have evidence to support why you need to fulfill this. So your action plan should consider all of these things. 
there is a worksheet that's in the resources folder for you to fill out. And once you fill that out, then you can upload it to Buzz and then you've completed this course. So I really appreciate uh, the time that you have invested in going through this process. If you have questions, my email is below and then uh, I am more than happy to answer those questions. Thanks for taking the